Yesterday, I was a big believer in HTMX. I thought it was the best way to build reactive websites using server-side rendering. But tech moves quickly, and there is a new sheriff in town, and that sheriff is HTMZ. But before I get to that, I have to do a quick description of what we're up to. The standard way to build websites nowadays is using client-side rendering with something like React and users expect a reactive interface. But client-side rendering means that you need your state in two places. The answer to this is to use HTMX. It lets you create reactive interfaces using server-side rendering. And its standout feature is that it's server-side rendering where you don't have to reload the whole page. You can just pick one component and reload that one. It also supports many other features but the main thing I use it for is taking a single component and swapping out the HTML instead of doing a full page re-render. But this, 14 kilobytes, is too much to be sending down to the client. So there's a new sheriff in town, a more efficient, cleaner, sleeker, better sheriff. In comes HTMZ. What is HTMZ? It gives you the standout feature of HTMX, which is replacing a single component instead of a full page re-render, but it does so with no dependencies. And as you can see, it is 166 bytes total. What I have here is the example HTMX project I did. And this is basically the use case that I always use HTMX for. Or in 90% of cases, I just want to change a component without re-rendering the whole page. And HTMZ lets me do this with a much smaller size. So I'm going to convert this project to use HTMZ. And along the way, we're going to get to use for Kotlin DSL a little bit more so we can understand how it works and how it is to actually add code to it. This will be a very simple change, but hopefully you can learn something. So HTMZ, all you have to do is no download. You just add this iframe to your index. So I go here, I go in my index. So my index wraps my actual page and I have a header and a body. So this is where I install HTMX. We won't need that anymore. And here instead, I can just add an iframe and hidden equals true name equals HTMC and onload equals, there you go, copy that. And that's it, we have HTMZ installed. So right now, if I reload this page after changing it to HTMZ and removing HTMX, this doesn't work. But what I need to do is I need to update. I don't need the HS get anymore. I can delete that, replace that here. And then afterwards here, I just put the ID of the component that I want to replace. And then I set the target to uh, HTMZ. So these are all just standard HTML attributes, nothing new to add. And now when I reload, I reload this page now, it works. So what is this actually doing? This creates a hidden iframe with the name HTMZ. And uh, iframe, iframe just, this just makes it execute last. It looks for a query selector of whatever's after the hash in the URL and replaces it with whatever the response is. So when we're doing this, we're doing href, we're setting what ID we want to replace, and we're setting that whatever we reply, we want to send to the target iframe. And that said, that's all it takes to get to the standout feature of HTMX. And obviously, I was kidding, this doesn't replace all of HTMX, but it gets you a lot of the way there. And I think for smaller projects, which most of the projects I do, this will do just fine and I might try just using it, see how I go. But as soon as you get something more complicated, when you need to do polling or web sockets, for example, the poker app that I built using HTMX, uh, this won't do at all. Um, but it's a cool little snip. I don't know you could do this directly in HTML. Uh, very cool. Thanks for watching.